Good morning, friends. I welcome you to CA Final, SCM, and PE, a new syllabus batch. Today we are recording lecture number one, and please remember this lecture is of version four, right? The lecture is of version four, so it's a latest version, version four batch for you. Let's go. I'll take you through introduction first. So, dear student friends, first of all, I welcome you again to the video lectures of CA Final SCMP Version Four. Now, before we start with the subject, I would like to take you through this introduction session. I would like to get introduced. I would like you to get introduced to your faculty. as well as the subject naturally the two important things you should get introduced to the subject which you are studying and from whom that is the faculty from whom you are studying this i would also like to share with you the method of teaching my way of teaching in this regular batch ours is a regular batch so that you will get a fair idea about what lies ahead actually today's lecture is going to be very important lecture my dear friends because in today's lecture i will discuss the entire future path how we'll proceed what type of notes i use what you have to do in the classroom right all this the entire plan of action for future will be discussing today so please pay attention right this will guide you to the path future path and you will get a fair amount of idea about how this batch will proceed so introduction of faculty myself ca rakesh agrawal my dear friends i'm a teacher by passion and chartered accountant by profession i cleared my bcom that is graduation examination way back in 1989 from pune university with a gold medal in the special subject of cost and management accounting that was my specialization paper while doing bcom i cleared my icw examination icw stands for cost and works accountants nowadays it is renamed as cma uh, today it is called as cost and management accountant but in our days it was called as cost and works accountants icw the latest name is icma now okay new name so i cleared my icw examination in the very first attempt in december 1990 examination and soon after clearing my icw exam i started teaching costing subject at pune chapter of cost accountants so my result was declared in 1991 and the moment i cleared i joined as a visiting faculty at a local body of pune chapter of cost accountants so i am into teaching now since 1991 my dear friends right i am into teaching since 1991 and my favorite subject being costing only in our days when i did my ca the ca course was available only after graduation like today the course is available after 12th through foundation examination but that was not the case when i did my ca so graduation was compulsory hence i started pursuing this course after my bcom that is after my graduation and i cleared my ca final examination in november 1992 attempt with 32nd rank in all india merit list i went to teaching field not by chance or by accident but due to choice please remember i am here by choice not by chance not by accident now why i am telling you now being in the merit in our days we used to get the uh, interview letters from big companies so i had also got around 14 15 offers from different companies to come and appear for the interviews but i left the job offers another point is my father being a practicing chartered accountant that was an obvious choice in front of me to continue with him into practice but then i left practice my father's practice i left the job opportunities and i entered into teaching therefore i said i am here by choice and not by chance 
I prefer the teaching over the job offers and my dad's a CA practice as I have already told you. Now this is a brief introduction about me, right? whatever was very very important I have told you. Now if you are interested in knowing more about me then the more details are already printed in your notes just behind the index page. Like these are your notes, printed notes, right? I am going to deal or discuss with you about it in detail. Now in this printed notes just behind the index page, just if you turn the index page and you will find about the faculty. So details are written here, I will take you to this page also later on, right? So there you will find more details. Now some special mention and that is I started my own website in November 19, uh, November 2016, website I am saying, to facilitate online purchase of video lectures. You know nowadays due to change in technology, the way we used to deliver the lecture has completely undergone a change, right? Earlier we used to teach in the classroom. I started teaching on blackboard, then we shifted to whiteboard, that is whiteboard with marker pen, then slowly we shifted to presentation, PPT presentation and so on. So the way of teaching or mode of teaching went on changing and nowadays you know almost all of you are watching me at your home, at your premises as per your convenience. So the teacher has reached you through video lectures that is the latest technology and to enable you to buy those uh, video lectures as per your choice uh, I have created this online website right from where you can buy those video lectures. So this is the new way, I don't know where we will go in future, the technology is ever changing. Now the website is this www.carakeshagrawal.in, the website is in my name only. Just remember it is carakeshagrawal.in, it is not .com, please remember it is .in because otherwise you will make a mistake there. And you will notice on each of my PPT presentation at the bottom, you will find it here and at the same time in your notes also you will find it on every page. So it is already mentioned everywhere. Now this website allows you to buy any product online and it is delivered to your address by courier. I had also launched a free mobile app titled as Costing Dictionary. Please remember it is a free mobile app. And it's titled as Costing Dictionary by C.A. Rakesh Agrawal. It is an Android app and can be downloaded from Google Play Store. Now, this is a free app without advertisement, please remember. How it will be useful to you? What it contains? Now, it allows you, that app allows you to understand the basic concepts of costing on the move. So, wherever you are having some waiting time, you are waiting for a government officer, you are waiting at a doctor's place or anywhere or you are just traveling and you have free time. If you want, you can revise the basic concepts of costing, definitions of costing. If any new term of costing you are unable to understand, you will search it here, right? It is alphabetically arranged. All the different different terms and definitions of costing are alphabetically arranged and they are explained in brief. So it is like a dictionary only. So it is a costing dictionary which is freely available to all. You can download and take the benefit of it. Our website which I mentioned to you will also help you to solve your subject related difficulties and for updations about future changes. What I have done, some common queries which students ask me, those I have put, those answers I have put on the website so that you do not have to wait for my reply, you will go and you will find the answers there. Plus whatever changes takes place, it is an ever changing world nowadays. I am teaching you today, something may change tomorrow. So all these changes, updations you will find on our website. I will just give you a brief idea about what you will find. Now especially on our website, there is a section called student corner. There is a student corner section on our website is important for you, especially for students. It contains soft copy of amendment batch notes, if there are any changes. Actually uh, costing subject does not have amendments, but I have given the name amendment because students love to hear that name. So really speaking amendments are more common for direct tax, indirect tax, corporate laws, not very common for costing subject or SCMP, but a name I have given amendment, don't worry there are no amendments, what I do? I do the compilation 
or whatever new questions have come up in one year. So in one year's patch, like two exams takes place of the institute. So suggested answer comes in. I modify that answer as per uh, my uh, knowledge. Then RTP gets in, some model test papers are there and some new questions uh, appearing in the module, etc. or sometimes on the website of the institute. So I make a compilation of all this, right? Whatever new questions have come up in one year and those uh, questions I put in amendment batch notes. And that is a PDF copy of amendment batch notes which can be downloaded from our website free of cost, right? So that you can keep yourself updating about the new questions. I repeat, I have given the name amendments. Really, there are no amendments. There are new questions only, right, for this subject. Then answers to common queries, as, as I have already told you, are already available on the website. Exam paper analysis, after the exam gets over and before the suggested answer is released by the institute, in between that, we try to give our own analysis, not the answer, but I just give my analysis or views about the exam paper. And if there are any notification about the changes in syllabus, minor changes here and there, those also we give on the website under the student corner section. Now let me introduce you with the subject because that is what is important. So let's go to the subject. SCN, SCM and PE syllabus, right? Full form, all of you are aware. Strategic cost management and performance evaluation. That is the full name of this SCM and P. The syllabus contains total 13 chapters. If you check your module, ICAI module, you'll find there are total 13 chapters. Now for the purpose of teaching, I have spread it over five volumes in our classroom notes. So all this matter is spread over five volumes. It means this is, I'm carrying volume one today. You will have five such volumes, spiral binded notes, five volumes. So it is spread over five volumes. I'll take you through these five volumes. So our classroom notes, first of all, they are in black and white. Please remember our notes are in black and white and they are in spiral binding format as I've shown you, right? Right, black and white notes and this is called spiral binding. These are in spiral binding format. So you'll get it in five volumes, volume one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'll quickly uh, take you through the index page of these five volumes. I'll just take you through index page and from index page, I'll explain you your syllabus and different chapters. Okay, my dear friends. So I'm taking you through the index page. Now, I'm showing you the index page of volume one, my dear friends. This is volume one of your version four batch, right? See, this is your chapter number one. CN stands for chapter number one. Chapter number one is introduction to strategic cost management. There are seven questions in this chapter and this chapter is spread from page one to 18. Right? I want your notebook in which you'll be writing the answer. That notebook should also have the first page of your notebook, you'll write your name. First page of your notebook, I'm saying. On first page, please write your name. Please write the name of the subject. And please prepare the index like this. Right, but keep that index blank as we keep filling up the notebook later on you can fill the index page that the answers to this chapter lies from page this to this. Are you getting my point? So a similar type of index, not the same index, a similar type of index you'll prepare in your notebook. So that the moment you open the first page of your notebook, you'll come to know that which chapter, the answer of which chapter lies from page, which uh, page number from where to where. So it will be easy for you to search later on. Are you getting the point? Because questions will be in my printed notes and answers will be in your notebook. So before the exam, you need not search unnecessarily. You should not keep on turning the pages in searching that answer of which question lies where. So we'll have a perfect system. And you'll do one more thing. In your notebook, you will give the page numbers, serial numbers, page number one, two, three, four. That also you will assign today in your notebook and you should naturally buy full scape notebook, right? Full scape A4 size and above. So that notebook uh, you will buy minimum 200 pages. Okay. So chapter one, introduction to strategic cost management. Chapter number two, modern business environment, 
consisting of 19 questions and it, this chapter is spread from page 19 to 63. Similarly, you will find this is your syllabus my dear friends. Chapter number 3 is lean system and innovations. Now right hand side columns I won't read because it contains the number of questions and page numbers. Then cost, man, uh, cost management techniques is the fourth chapter. This fifth chapter cost management for specific sectors you will find 0, 0 questions. Reason. This chapter is recently deleted by the institute. So name is still there. I have not changed the uh, chapter number because other sequence will change. So chapter number 5 was there. It was there till May 2021 exam. It is deleted from November 2021 exam and onwards. Are you getting it? Chapter, chapter number 5 is deleted from your syllabus from November 2021 examination the notification of which is available on the institute's website also and I have also notified it on my website, right. Therefore, I have deleted the question on just one page I have mentioned that this chapter is deleted, right. So, it is on page 175, just a mention. Then chapter number 6 is decision making and chapter number 7 is pricing strategies, oblique pricing decisions and there is a annexure 1 in the form of a logarithm table. So, I have put a logarithm and anti-logarithm table. At few places we will need it. So, log anti-log table is at the end. This is index page of volume 1 my dear friends. Now, I will take you to volume 2 because you should know what you will be getting in your hands and how we will be using it. This is volume 2 my dear friends of your version 4 notes. It means please remember before I am starting with this lectures, recording of these lectures, I have kept all my notes ready of all 5 volumes. Please remember everything is ready with me now. Now it contains remaining chapters. Please remember chapter 1 to 7. Chapter 1 to 7 I have included in volume 1. Now chapter 8 called as performance measurement and evaluation. Chapter 9 divisional transfer pricing. Chapter 10, Strategic Analysis of Operating Income. Chapter 11, Budgetary Control. Chapter 12, Standard Costing. Right? And something extra I have given you at the end of Volume 2 notes that is the study plan. How you should plan for your CA final studies. And I put some timetables of your study. Timetable which you can use on daily basis and specially before revision, before the exam for a revision of the syllabus and timetable for appearing for self test that is mock test papers. Those imaginary timetables I have given to you, you can make some modifications in that timetable and use it. So, some study plan and timetable I have given at the end of volume 2 notes. Now, I think I told you just few minutes before that in your syllabus there are 13 chapters that is what I told you. But in my notes you will find there are 12 chapters chapter 1 to 7 in volume 1 and chapter 8 to 12 in volume 2. So I have missed out which chapter 13 number no my dear friends I have not missed out I have to just tell you. In your study material there is a small third booklet which is actually chapter number 13 which is called case studies. When you will get the uh, uh, module from your institute, right, you will find a, a third small booklet that is called case studies. Actually, that is chapter number 13. Now, what I did then, where case studies have gone? What I did, case studies are based on some respective chapters. So, if the case study belongs to chapter 1, I have inserted it in chapter 1. If the case study belongs to chapter 6, I have inserted it in chapter 6. If the case study belongs to chapter 9, I have put it under chapter 9. Are you getting my point? So that your understanding will be better. So if I am discussing a particular matter in a particular chapter, suppose I am on chapter number 10 and I have discussed a particular matter. So related case study I will discuss immediately thereafter. And therefore chapter number 13 has disappeared from my notes. But the case studies will appear in the respective chapter from 1 to 12. All this I have to make clear because probably you will be of the opinion after seeing the module that sir has skipped one of the chapters. No my dear friends. So all these case studies have shifted to respective chapters from 1 to 12. Is that clear? So that is how we are going to cover the case studies at the respective places in the respective chapters. 
Now I will take you to these are two main uh, volumes, volume 1 and 2 will, which we will be using for recording of the lectures. Now then what are, what are those remaining 3 volumes because I said will be, I will be giving you the notes in 5 volumes. So I will take you to volume 3. Now my dear friends this volume 3 is your practice manual. This volume 3 is your practice manual means practice book for you. This practice manual contains questions as well as the solutions for extra practice, for extra practice. So that you can also do self-study at home, you can test yourself at home. Now in volume 3, I have put the questions and solutions of chapter 1 to 7, of chapter 1 to 7. So the questions along with the answers of chapter 1 to 7 are in volume 3 for your practice right so whenever you finish your studies or I would suggest whenever I complete one chapter you may start solving the questions from practice manual related to that chapter that will be best if you get time the moment I finish one chapter you may start solving similar questions from the respective practice manual if you are unable to find time due to your article ship and other commitments then whenever you get time before the exam you may solve the questions from practice manual so it is a practice book for you you can say it's like a homework book so once again same seven chapters are here chapter 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 and these are the number of questions and respective page numbers see in every volume i have written one note i have written one note everywhere in every uh, index page of each volume that is you can download the latest exam papers and solutions latest changes etc from our website this www.crakeshagrawal.in from a tab called student corner this note i have given because you studied today by the time you appear for your exam few more exams might have taken place few more rtps revisionary test papers might have come up so that is what keeps on happening whenever you take uh, whenever you study and whenever you appear for the exam there is going to be a gap for each and every subject. So all future changes you can take from here. Future changes means basically additional questions. Now what is this volume 4 then? My dear friends volume 4 is another, again a practice manual only but for chapter 8 to 13 remaining chapter. Chapter 1 to 7 is covered in practice manual volume number 3 and questions and answers for your practice at home of chapter 8 to 13 are covered in volume number 4. So it's here chapter 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now what I did? I have inserted one more chapter that is 13 number chapter that is of case studies and case scenarios. What happened? Sometimes a case study consists of references from 2-3 chapters. Means there is a single case study but you have to refer 2-3 chapters, the concept discussed in 2-3 chapters. So general questions or mixed questions from more than one chapter I have put under 13 because I cannot include it in one particular chapter. So you should have the knowledge of 2-3 different chapters or 2-3 different concepts to solve that case study and therefore I have put it in last that is chapter number 13. Okay my dear friends. So in chapter number 13 also you will find some of the case studies and case scenarios, general case studies. So these are your four volumes that is basically the syllabus and earlier I had told you, okay we will go to volume 5 also. This volume 5 is something called as case study digest which institute had issued, case study digest short form given by the students is CSD, that is a case study digest. Now what is this, what institute did, institute came out with a separate publication called case study digest and they released it on the website. I think institute did it sometimes in the month of February 2021. So it contains nothing but additional questions, it is nothing but a practice manual given by the institute. Please remember the questions contained in case study digest will be recorded, will be discussed in the uh, video lectures at the end. It means first I will record individual chapters that is volume 1 
and volume 2. Volume 1 and 2 is for me for dealing with in the classroom. And volume 3 and 4 is for you as a practice manual. But volume 5 questions of case study digest also will be given to you right in the video recorded format and these are the notes. Now what this case study digest con uh, contains? It contains case studies, there are around 14 case studies. It contains case scenarios, case scenarios are smaller case studies, there are 12 case scenarios and skill assessment based questions, SABQ, that is the name given by institute which is nothing but practical questions. Practical questions are given a new name by the institute as skill assessment based question. So, at 23 skill assessment based questions, please remember these uh, questions and answers that is case studies, case scenarios and skill assessment based questions will be discussed and will be provided to you in the form of video lectures. But the questions and solutions are lying in volume 5, okay, I hope you got it. So, these are the 5 volumes of notes which you will be getting and in every of your notes behind the index page you will find a write up about faculty about me. So as I, I had told you that behind the index page you will find in detail about me. So if you are interested you may go through it. So it is about the faculty. Let me tell you one more thing. In every volume or in every of your notes, you will find a detailed index inside. Like I am sharing with you the volume 1 detailed index. On the front page, you will find a brief index. See this front page is just a brief index. But you will find a detailed index inside. It is lying here. See it's a, this is a detailed index which I am showing you on the screen, right. Now what this detailed index contains, it's very helpful to you, especially before the exam. If you want to search for a particular matter right, or a particular question, then you do not have to search through all pages. You can refer the detailed index like chapter 1, right? chapter number 1 introduction to strategic cost management. Traditional cost management is on page 1, strategic cost management is discussed on page 1, then there are certain examples given, 3 examples are given lying on page 2. Comparison between traditional strategic cost management lying on page 3, components of strategic cost management page 3 and so on. I do not want to bore you on the lecture number 1, but this is very useful my dear friends. Are you getting it? Like you want to only uh, refer this core competence analysis, so you have to directly go to page 8, you will find core competence analysis there. So it will save your time. Indirectly, it is a detailed syllabus also. Detailed index is nothing but a detailed syllabus, right? That what it contains, each chapter contains what. So, this is how you will find the detailed index. Please remember, I had to take a lot of efforts to create this detailed index for you page wise, right? Like this is cost of quality in chapter number 2. Chapter number 2 is modern business environment. Cost of quality is lying on page number 25, right? So, all this you will find in the detailed index. Sometimes what happens, you yourself do not know what is contained in your printed notes because you have not gone through it carefully. So you should first go through the initial pages of your notes, at least you will come to know what lies inside. Like here practical questions, question ranging from page 12, uh, question 12 to 17 related to this throughput accounting and theory of constraints is lying on page 46 and onwards and so on. So, this is how it is, detailed index, I will just quickly rush through now because it is already with you in your printed notes. This is very helpful to you before the exam my dear friends, very helpful. See here I have written a note, chapter 5, deleted from your syllabus with effect from number 2021, exam and onwards. So it's good, your burden is reduced by the institute. There was one small chapter even otherwise, chapter 5 was very small, but now it's deleted. Okay, my dear friends, so this is what it is. Then I'll take you to the coverage of syllabus little later. Okay, so we'll continue with our discussion further. 
So this is what your syllabus is. I just wanted to take you through your entire syllabus and how I'll be covering it. I hope you got a fair idea. Volume 1 and 2 will be discussed thoroughly in the classroom. Volume 3 and 4 is your practice man manual and volume 5 is case study digest. Okay. Now my teaching style, right? You should be aware of the way I am going to teach. The game of cricket, I am comparing my teaching with a cricket game. The game of cricket is played in three formats, all of you are aware. And cricket being a very popular sport in India. It's a test match or it's a one day match or it's a 2020 match. You know test match, it runs for five days, right? Test cricket which is not very popular nowadays. But test cricket or test match runs for five days. One day match is for one whole day. 50-50 overs are played by both the teams and 2020 match all of you are aware it runs few day, uh, few hours only actually there are three uh, matches which takes place in one day of 2020 so it's of 20 overs now why I gave you this reference I will compare it with our coaching now similarly coaching for any subject not my subject for any subject is nowadays available in three formats coaching for any of the subjects nowadays available in three formats that is regular batch regular batch is like a test match of cricket then revision batch a little detailed revision batch is like a one day match and nowadays some faculty record quick revision batch quick revision batch or last minute revision just day before the exam that is like a 2020 match now why discuss this our batch is a regular batch our batch is a regular batch and regular batch is like a test cricket match. It means everything will be dealt in detail. Regular batch is meant for those students who are studying this subject for the first time. Regular batch which I am recording now is meant for those students who are studying this subject for the first time. For them this, is, uh, uh, this batch is being recorded or it is intended. However, students tend to forget. By the time exam comes near, they tend to forget. Then they may go for either a revision batch or a quick revision batch. Okay. So, ours is a regular batch that is a test match. So, you should have sufficient patience. right? You should possess that patience to cover the syllabus once in detail. In detail like a test match. We will discuss everything from A to Z. Being a regular batch, we will discuss everything from A to Z covering entire module, entire ICEI module and something extra also. I will be covering something extra also, other than module also. Please mind it well because sometimes students say, Sir, a question you are uh, covering in your notes is not there in the module, then why you are doing it? Please remember, module has insufficient number of questions, insufficient number of practical questions. Sometimes it may contain irrelevant theory also. Then what is the role of a teacher? Right? We have to do the balancing. So something which is irrelevant, we have deleted. Some, uh, somewhere where questions are less or not sufficient or there are no questions on some of the topics, we have included it using intermediate and using old syllabus of costing. So we will be covering extra than module. You can be assured that we will be covering more than 200% than what is covered in the module. What did I say? First of all, entire module will be covered. Entire theory and all questions of the module will be covered. So that is 100%. Plus you can assume 100% extra or more than that will be covered. So my coverage in, the <coughs> in those five volumes will be more than 200%, my dear friends. Right, so I am not going to restrict myself only to module. Right, those students who want to study only module, naturally they will have other better choices. Right, I am going to cover everything in detail. I will give the reason also why and how. We will discuss theory of each chapter first. Naturally, I will be discussing the theoretical background of every chapter and then followed by practical questions and case studies. Theoretical discussion. And then practical questions based on that theoretical discussion and case studies if uh, given by the institute 
based on those concepts. Now there are some unsolved questions in your printed notes which we will be solving together and those answers you will be writing in your notebook and you are expected to write it down those answers in your notebook for future reference. I have seen few students nowadays, few students are so lethargic that they don't take the efforts of writing the answer also and then what happens after few months or after a year or so as they have not written the answer and it has got evaporated from here, right, from your memory. Then they keep searching, sir, I am not getting the answer. Basically, I have discussed the answer step by step, step by step, we have developed the answer. So, you have to, you are supposed to write it down in your notebook so that later on you can refer it. So, it is very surprising. Exam also paper you have to write. So, you have to develop the writing practice. So, some students are listening the lectures only, right. They are not, write, they are not taking the writing efforts. Please do that. Therefore, I said have a separate notebook and you will take down the answers of those unsolved questions. Actually, you will be solving it along with me, right. And there are certain solved questions also in your notes. To reduce your writing efforts, I have done, uh, let us say, balancing act. Neither I have printed all answers of all the questions, nor I have kept all questions unsolved. So, some are unsolved and some questions are solved. And those answers are printed in the notes, which we will discuss fully in our lectures. Solved questions will be discussed fully with logic in the classroom, right, in those video lectures. Answers of case studies. Answers of case studies are theory answers basically. Case studies you have to keep writing like an essay. So, it is like an essay writing. So, answers of case studies are also printed in your notes and we will discuss them in our lectures, okay. So, there are some solved questions with answers in your regular notes of volume 1 and 2. There are some case studies with answers in your volume 1 and 2. Other than volume 3, 4, right, 3, 4, 5 I am not discussing at present. That I have already told you, right, what is contained in 3, 4, 5. In the classroom, we will be mainly dealing with volume 1 and 2. And there are unsolved questions also. ICAI has created a huge gap between your CA intermediate and CA final syllabus. Now try to understand this, why we have to change our teaching technique. There is a big gap between CA inter and CA final. Suppose this mountain is CA inter, let us assume. And there is another mountain, let us call this is CA final. But there is a valley in between, there is a valley in between, there is a gap in between. And you are supposed to jump from here to here right, you are a student, right, and you are to jump from here to here directly. Now, there is every possibility that you will fall down. Now, what as a teacher I have to do? I have to bridge, I have to make a bridge here, right, so that you can safely walk and move to CA final from CA intermediate. Just to give you a simple example, a small example, that why we have added extra questions and extra theory in our notes while teaching, which is not there in your module. So, you will be teaching extra than module. Why? Because I said there is a gap between CA intermediate syllabus and CA final syllabus. Just if you remember CA intermediate standard costing, just try to recall in CA intermediate syllabus of standard costing only cost variances are covered. Only cost variances are covered. That is material cost variance, labor cost variance, variable overhead cost variance and fixed overhead cost variance. That is all. Basic questions. Profit variances, sales variances, reconciliation of budgeted and actual profit are not covered in CA intermediate syllabus. And if you open the CA final module of standard costing, CA final module of standard costing if you open, you will on first page you will find ex ante and ex post variance. What you will find? Ex ante, ex post variance you will find standard costing with ABC analysis, you will find standard costing absorption costing with absorption costing. How you will deal with this? In between something is missing. So, what I had to do? I have to borrow some theory and questions from CA intermediate syllabus. I had to borrow some uh, theory and questions from CA final old syllabus. Actually, CA final old syllabus was very good. Where intermediate ends CA final used to start, CA final old syllabus I am saying, 
but now there is a gap in between. The CA final new syllabus is taken from international syllabus now of other institutes. And there is a link, the link in between, the bridge in between is missing. So I have to construct that bridge so that you can smoothly walk from CA intermediate to CA final. Because few things institute has assumed and they have taken it for granted that you know it. Which the fact might be you might have forgotten what you have studied in intermediate also. Right? You may not be able to recall the formulas of marginal costing and standard costing chapter. So how I can assume and directly take you from where the institute's module starts. Similarly, if you check the institute's module of marginal costing, that is decision making chapter, chapter number 6, right? it starts from somewhere else. <clears throat> that is the reason, because they have created a gap, we have to bridge the gap and we have to cover extra thing in the regular batch. Naturally, as I said, it's a regular batch and therefore we have to do it so that you can understand it better. So to bridge this gap, I may have to sometimes revise the concepts of CA intercosting and may have to take the help of old CA final syllabus also, right? Whatever is relevant only that much we have included. All this is done to ensure a better and conceptual understanding of the subject. Why we have done it? Why we are spending our time and your time? Because some students feel that we are wasting your time. No, my dear friends. If I only teach you module, only module, whatever institute has printed, you won't be able to understand the subject. Because there is no linkage here and there. And therefore, we have to do all this. Just to ensure better understanding. At the same time, the sequence of teaching will also be different from ICEI module. It means, my teaching sequence will not be the same sequence in which module is printed. Now, I will explain my teaching sequence through the index page of volume 1. I will once again take you through the index page of volume 1 to explain the sequence in which I will teach you, means these video lectures will be recorded. Now why I am changing the teaching sequence? Again to ensure better understanding. Because some concepts are covered in a particular chapter and on these concepts the next chapter is dependent. So that next chapter I have to teach next. But institute has not arranged these chapters in the normal sequence. Okay, I'll just take you to the index page and I'll let you know, right, that what I've done. Check here. This is our volume 1. I'll just put the index page. Okay. Now see friends from where I will start my journey. <clears throat> I will first start with chapter 6, decision making. This is the chapter which I am going to begin with, right? If possible in today's lecture itself, we may touch this chapter, decision making. Then I will take you to chapter 7, pricing decision or pricing strategies, right? I will first discuss in the classroom chapter 6, then chapter 7. Then I will follow this sequence, then chapter 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. This is the way we will proceed in the classroom. I have not changed the name of the chapters, I have kept it as it is so that you can compare it with the module, but teaching sequence will change. I will start not from chapter 1, but I will start from chapter 6, 6, 7 and then 1, 2, 3, 4. Similarly, in volume 2, in volume 2 what sequence I will follow, let me tell you. In volume 2, I will first deal with chapter 10 then 11, then 12, and then 8 and 9. Is that okay? So this is the sequence in which I will be dealing with in the classroom because I said something which is discussed in the previous chapter will be useful to you in the next chapter for better understanding. Okay, my dear friends. Coverage in your version 4. What we are going to cover in this version 4 batch? It's very important for you to know what is covered in this version 4 batch. To save your writing time, I have printed it in your notes itself. The coverage of syllabus is already printed in your notes. So, I will take you through the relevant page from your notes itself to explain it. So, I will just take you again uh, to the respective page and that page is included in your printed notes, don't worry. 
that is printed after the detailed index after the detailed index right after the detailed index you'll find something is printed and that is this coverage of syllabus in version 4 now what we are going to cover in your version 4 batch your entire ICAI module up to November 2020 edition actually this new syllabus was launched on 1st July 2017 it coincides with the date of GST that time Institute came out with a module then they came out with revised module later on and third time this is revised in November 1990 it's a third time this is a third edition actually which institute calls it at November 2020 edition so this is the third time the module was revised or updated that entire module at present available when I am recording lecture today is the latest module is this I don't know whether institute will change the module again right but those changes you will find on our website now so entire ICI module is covered revisionary test papers RTP is up to May 2021 exams are covered all RTPs up to May 2021 mock test papers up to up to October 2020 are covered past exam papers up to January 2021 exams are covered right we have to wait for the suggested answer of the Institute and nowadays Institute issues the suggested answer very late so past exam papers are covered additional questions uploaded on the Institute's website up to June 21 are covered additional case studies uploaded by institute on the website up to june 21 are covered additional case scenarios these are questions practical questions case studies and case scenarios up to june 21 then old syllabus ca final costing module some relevant and selected questions are also covered as i told you to bridge the gap we have covered some concepts and questions from old syllabus also so old syllabus module some relevant portion is covered old syllabus of CA final QT module quantitative technique a little bit of quantitative technique is also included in your syllabus in new syllabus little bit uh, which we'll be discussing in the respective chapters so that also some relevant portion in selected questions are covered old syllabus name was advanced management accounting there is a practice manual in the old syllabus practice manual some relevant part is covered and entire case study digest case study digest was also issued as i told you in february 2021 entire of your case study digest will be included actually case study digest is your volume 5 itself in volume 5 entire case study digest is included and see read this important note just read it out you'll come to know what is written there I hope you, you are reading it that's important students always ask this question sir I will buy your product today if there are new questions ahead after buying what will happen that question is answered here that constant change is a way of life and in spite of covering all the above portion in this version there is always a possibility that by the time you appear for your exam some more exams might have taken place in between and some changes may be proposed by ICI and so on what can be done do you think you can study all the eight subjects just two months before the exam is it possible if you want everything latest so you have to start your studies quite in advance because to cover eight papers eight subjects even if you consider on an average three months for one subject three months if you cover uh, consider for one subject then in one year you'll be able to cover four subjects only so you'll need two years to cover eight subjects so when you have to start and after covering eight subjects then you have to go for revision and cell testing that is mock test papers so all this require time so you have to take up a particular subject now and by the time your exam takes place some changes might have taken place now so to keep you updated yourself updated with these changes and updates i have made a practice to keep on uploading the soft copy of amendment batch notes once in a year i've told you that and it will be available to you for downloading free of cost on our websites all this is written right my objective is that you should not only clear your exam in the first attempt but 
should also make use of this knowledge in your professional career to the extent possible. To the extent possible, apply this knowledge in the practical world also. And getting CA degree is important, no doubt, but gaining knowledge is equally important. So I'll be discussing, sometimes I'll be giving references, I'll be discussing my life experiences with you. Just to illustrate a point, because I think just getting degree is not that important, gaining knowledge is also equally important. Right. So this is about the coverage in your version 4 and it's already printed there, you can always refer. I will use 100% English to conduct this batch. So this batch will be recorded in 100% English. I will avoid the use of Hindi as far as possible, I will try to avoid use of Hindi because it is not understood in the southern part of India. In our South India part, people don't know Hindi and therefore if I start speaking in Hindi, right, these people are unable to understand and there are queries. But in the northern part of India, people love more of theory, more use of uh, Hindi. Sorry, uh, not theory, Hindi. So, northern part of India loves Hindi, southern part of India loves English. Now, I am in a fix what to do. If I start speaking in Hindi, some people won't understand. But English everybody understands. Therefore, I prefer to record the batch in English. Your syllabus itself is in English, your module is in English, your exam paper is going to be in English, you have to write the answer in English. Therefore, not understanding English is not a problem. But not understanding Hindi could be a problem in southern part and therefore, I will record all these lectures in 100% English. Now some self-discipline my dear friends, right, this is specially for you. As a teacher, we love to give those instructions, can't help. As you are watching these video lectures at your own premises and as per your own convenience, it is important to maintain self-discipline to get a maximum benefit of these lectures. Right? Naturally, you are also interested in getting the maximum benefit out of these video lectures. I am also interested in the same thing that once you spend money and buy a particular product, right, you should derive maximum benefit. Now to derive maximum benefit, what you have to do? Please stay away from all distractions while watching these lectures, stay away from all distractions while watching these lectures. Please put your mobile phone in a silent mode and switch off TV. If you are doing multitasking, you won't do it, CA students are very sincere but we have seen few students. We have seen few students whose mobile is on, there is a cricket match going on on the television and the video lectures are also on on the laptop. Now if you are watching three things, uh, TV, video lectures and mobile. How much you will be able to understand, I don't know. In spite of these repetitive instructions, some students try to do it and they end up getting nothing because unless you put your heart and soul in one activity, you won't get the result. If you are watching TV, pay attention and watch TV only then. That is what I mean to say. Do one thing at a time with full concentration. If you have sit for studies, if you are watching the video lectures, my sincere request to you, with folded hands, my sincere request to you is, please pay 100% attention to your job that is of studying only, full attention. This subject is not easy, my dear friends. If you miss one word, one concept, you won't understand the discussion ahead or you won't understand the answer of a particular question because you have missed out a concept and on that concept, the question was based. So with folded hands, I am requesting you, Please give your 100%, then only you will get the result in the first attempt. You will be through the CA examination in the first attempt. Otherwise, you know the definition of CA. CA stands for come again also. CA stands for come again also. From May to November, November to next May. Please don't do that. If there is an urgent phone call, then please pause the lecture. There is a pause button here, right? at the bottom strip, so you can pause the lecture. Please remember pause time is not counted in your viewing time. So you can pause the lecture, attend the phone call and then restart the lecture again. Okay. So don't keep the lecture also running and mobile also running. Pause it, finish that urgent call, keep it and come back to the studies. Please watch one full lecture in one sitting. 
our each lecture will be of the duration let us say around 2 hours to 3 hours i'll give you a detailed uh, list of I mean, that is lecture wise details i call lecture 1 what is covered and what is the duration lecture 2 what is covered in lecture 2 what is the duration i'll be giving you that detailed list don't worry right so along with video lectures you'll get the entire list of lecture wise list what is covered but approximately i'm telling you each lecture will be of the duration between 2 hours to 3 hours each lecture as far as possible complete in one sitting you may take few pauses for few minutes right you have to go to washroom you can take a pause of one or two minutes you have to have a cup of tea you can take a small pause right or there's an urgent phone call but as far as possible complete the entire lecture in one sitting if it is not possible due to any emergency then complete the remaining lecture as soon as possible like half the lecture you have seen in the morning remaining half you can see in the evening or half lecture you have seen in the evening remaining half next day morning itself but cover that lecture as soon as possible don't keep it pending right one full lecture in one sitting prepare your own timetable please prepare your own timetable now right that is how you are going to watch the lectures either you have reserved the morning time or you have reserved the evening time you have reserved the duration let us say of three months or three and a half months and stick to that timetable so please prepare that timetable and follow it go as per the timetable otherwise we have seen with some of the students what happens they buy our product of one year validity i repeat some students buy the product from our website of one year validity the actual duration of the batch might be three months or three and a half months but this three and three and a half months batch they are unable to complete in one year and the product gets expired after the validity period gets over so you are unable to cover three months syllabus in one year i am talking about some students not you you are intelligent students you are sincere student but few students have made this mistake and the product has expired it means they are not sincere they have not prepared the timetable or they might have prepared the timetable but they didn't stick to it then how you'll be covering remaining subjects my dear friend if one subject is going on for one year how you'll cover eight subjects do you have eight years to cover it and therefore please prepare a timetable in emergency only you can have some uh, relaxation otherwise please follow the timetable and watch minimum one lecture daily minimum one lecture if you keep a long gap between in between two lectures then you will find it difficult to get reconnected like some students have watched lecture 1 to 12 then there is a gap of three months then they start watching lecture number 13 onwards for few more days then again a gap of two months and then remaining lectures do you think you will be able to understand there's a continuity right there's a continuity so continuity is broken and then you tend to forget and you are unable to recollect which uh, with uh, what where you had left so one lecture per day minimum and finish it off in the time of around three three and a half months please uh, sit with the calculator right calculator will be required to solve practical questions so please sit with the calculator perform calculations wherever it is there and write down the answers in your notebook right you need to have a practice of developing the solutions because the same way you have to develop it in the exam hall also please use the laptop for viewing the lectures instead of mobile phone see mobile screen is very small as compared to your laptop or tablet screen so i recommend you to use laptop or tablet our product works on all window based laptops right not desktop our product doesn't run on desktop it runs only on laptops window based laptops not iphone or apple ma <coughs> machintosh so window based laptops and android mobile phones but i won't recommend you to use android mobile phones because finally the mobile screen is small the lettering will be naturally small right the clarity will get reduced and you have to write the answer only in emergency use the mobile phone otherwise i would generally recommend you to use window based laptops for better view you may use earphone or headphone for better sound quality and to avoid external noise because you might be studying there might be some other members in the family or there might be a noise from coming from outside 
So if you are using the earphone or headphone, the outside noise will get reduced and you will have a better sound quality also will be better. Please view the lectures in the same sequence in which I have taught or in which I have recorded. As I said, I will be starting from chapter 6. You have to also start from chapter 6 only. And I will be giving it lecture number, lecture number 1, lecture number 2, lecture number 3, same sequence you have to follow, right? Because there is a linkage. So there is a linkage of previous lecture with the subsequent lectures. Therefore, you will not change the sequence. Some students jump. They say, no, no, I think in between chapters are not important. I'll directly go to this chapter number 12. Then I will come to chapter number 3. Please don't do that. It will uh, affect your understanding of the subject. So follow the same sequence. Your sincerity and regularity will pay rich dividend to you, my dear friends, right? And CA students are already sincere and regular, barring few percentage, barring few percentage who have come here by mistake to the CA course. Otherwise, CA course demands the sincerity and regularity. And I'm very confident those who are studying with me, those who are viewing these video lectures, all of you are very, very sincere and very regular. And if you watch these lectures with full attention and concentration and if you give stress on your conceptual understanding, I think you will be through with your examination in the first attempt, right? And I hope some of you will appear in the All India Merit List also. Now, let's start with the subject. These were all instructions which are generally given on day one. So that is why I recorded it in lecture one. Right, just to avoid you people committing certain mistakes and just to make you aware of the way we are going to proceed. So now let us touch the subject. I will revise the basic concepts of costing first. We will just revise few basic concepts of costing and then we will begin with chapter 6 that is decision making. So friends, we will move to the basic concepts. Yes friends, so we are starting with basic cost concepts. We'll do a quick revision of your CA intermediate costing concepts. CA intermediate costing concepts. Now, why I'm doing this? Because sometimes I get such funny queries from CA final students that I really doubt how they have passed CA intermediate. So sometimes the basic concepts are missing and therefore you are unable to understand the CA final level question. Therefore, we'll just take a quick revision of your intermediate. This revision will help us to understand the CA final costing in a better way. That is the whole purpose, right, behind revising the CA intermediate. So let's start with the word cost itself. I'll begin with the word cost itself. Let's go. Cost. Cost may be defined as the monetary value monetary value of all sacrifices made to achieve an objective. And what is that objective? Objective is either to produce the goods or to provide services. That is the objective. Now let us break this definition in parts. First of all, Cost is monetary value. Naturally, we measure the cost in rupee terms, in money terms. So, cost is always in monetary value. Right? Cost is always in monetary value. Like this tablet on which I am teaching, it costed me around 85,000. So, 85,000 is the cost of buying this tablet to me. So, the cost is expressed in rupees 85,000. That is a monetary value. Monetary value of the sacrifices which we make. We make certain sacrifices. What, what? To achieve some objective. It means if you want to achieve an objective or a goal, to achieve that goal, what sacrifices you have made, make a list of these sacrifices. Convert these sacrifices into its money value and add this money value. You will get the cost of achieving that objective. For you people, that is for students, the objective is to become CA. Now, if you want to calculate cost of becoming CA, because your objective is to become CA, so you want to calculate cost of becoming CA. In doing CA, whatever sacrifices you have made, make a list of all the sacrifices, convert it into its money value. 
and take the total, that total will be cost of becoming CA. Anyway, from classroom purpose or from exam point of view, our objective is either to produce and sell the goods or to provide service in the services. That is either we are in service industry or a manufacturing industry. Correct? Now, we don't talk much about trading because in trading you buy and sell ready-made. So basically our objective or our orientation will be towards manufacturing activity and providing services. So objective is either to produce the goods or to provide services. Now we'll take to produce and sell the goods. To achieve that objective, it means to achieve the objective of producing and selling the goods, whatever sacrifices you have made, monetary value of these sacrifices is called cost. You can define the cost in various other ways also. Now the problem is the word sacrifice. Now what are these sacrifices? So from exam point of view, the sacrifices are of three types. It means we have to make three sacrifices which are popularly called as three elements of cost. And these three sacrifices are material cost, labor cost and expenses. So these sacrifices are popularly called as elements of cost. Elements of cost. Now some of you say, some of you may say that sir we have studied the elements of cost as material, labor and overheads. But you are telling us something different. You are telling us as material, labor and expenses. So I will come to it just now in the next slide. Right? Three elements of cost that is material, labor and expenses. And the total of these three is total cost. So material cost plus labor cost plus expenses will make it total cost. So total cost is divided in three parts. You may call as three sacrifices or more popularly called as three elements of cost. Now we will discuss one by one. What is material cost? Now imagine manufacturing industry or let us imagine manufacture of a desk bench. Manufacture of a desk bench in the classroom. Now to manufacture this desk bench, whatever physical and tangible item is getting consumed in the process of manufacturing, any physical or tangible item which gets consumed in the process of manufacture, I said consumed, physical and tangible item which is getting consumed in the process of manufacture. The monetary value of such physical and tangible items which is getting consumed in the process of manufacture is called material cost. It means you just imagine for a day's bench whatever is required, plywood, sun mica, fevicol, steel frame, paint, right? There is something called bidding patti which is required on the side, nails, whatever, whatever material is required right which will get consumed in the process of manufacture its cost monetary value is called material cost now we go to labor cost labor cost is the word used for employee cost employee cost and labor cost is one and the same you may also call it as manpower cost we have to use manpower or people to get the work done and the monetary compensation which we give to these employees in the form of salaries, wages, perk visits, some benefits, right? All this is cost to the organization. So whatever salary, wages, benefits, perk visits you are giving to your employees to get the work done from them, this monetary benefit given to them is the cost to the employer or cost to the organization which is known as labor cost. Labor doesn't always means a blackish fellow sweating a lot and digging along the roadside. No. Even a managing director's salary will come under labor cost. A chartered accountant's salary will also fall under labor cost. So labor cost word has a wide meaning, wide connotation that is employee cost or manpower cost. Right? So employee cost or manpower cost is called labor cost. And now remaining costs are called expenses. Any cost which neither can be covered under material head nor can be covered under labor head that is employee cost will automatically fall under expenses. Now you will say then which are those? Suppose these premises are rented and I am paying the rent for using the premises. So rent will neither go under material nor will go under labor. So it, will, it has to go under 
expenses. Electricity bill, if I am paying, electricity and power bill, it has to go under expenses, isn't it? Suppose uh, I am charging depreciation on fixed assets for use of fixed assets. So depreciation on fixed assets will go under expenses. Please remember I said depreciation of fixed asset. Fixed asset is not consumed, fixed asset is used. See when a tangible item gets consumed, the cost goes under material head. But when a tangible or physical item is, get, is getting used, not consumed, it is getting used and it will be used for a longer period of time, then we charge the appropriate part towards usage of asset which is called depreciation. So depreciation goes under expenses, depreciation of fixed assets. So that is how the classification is. Now you imagine any business and you will find the cost will get classified in three parts, either material or labor or expenses. Now each of these three costs or three elements of cost will be further divided in two, two parts as direct cost and indirect cost. That is material cost will be divided in two parts that is direct material and indirect material. Similarly, labor cost will be divided in two parts as direct labor and indirect labor. Expenses will also get divided in two parts as a direct expenses and indirect expenses. We will be discussing them little more. As I said, we are just revising the intermediate. I am not teaching you anything new. But in case if you have not studied with me or might not have studied uh, uh, properly, so we will have to put it right now. Now all the direct cost together that is direct material plus direct labor plus direct expenses all these three together is called as prime cost. Prime cost is a substitute word for direct cost. Direct material, direct labor, direct expenses together is called prime cost. My dear friends if you want to take down anything from this it's your choice. You may take it down in the notebook because this is your intermediate. So I have not printed it again in CA final notes because this is assumed to be known to you. In case if you think that you need to take it down, that is your choice. Now indirect material plus indirect labor plus indirect expenses together, all indirect expenses together is called overheads. So overheads are here. Overheads is a substitute word for indirect cost. I mean to say prime cost is a direct cost and overheads is nothing but indirect cost and if you now remember we used to say total cost is equal to prime cost plus overheads correct so it is here overheads is added to prime cost to get the total cost so total cost can also be said as direct cost plus indirect cost or total cost can also be said as prime cost plus overheads now how to distinguish between direct and indirect cost there is a simple criteria if there is one to one relationship with the cost incurred and the cost object then it is called direct cost now what do you mean by cost object cost object is the product whose cost you want to calculate or the service whose cost you want to calculate because our objective is to calculate the cost of goods which we are producing or the service which we are providing so in our example we'll take a product let us say desk bench if I am interested in calculating cost of a desk bench, then the desk bench will become my cost object. Are you getting it? Whose cost is to be calculated, that becomes your cost object. Now, if there is one to one relationship between cost object and the cost incurred, very easily, you can correlate very easily that this much cost is incurred for this cost object, then it is called direct cost. If the cost is incurred, but there is no one to one relationship, there is no direct relationship with the cost and cost object, then we may call it as indirect cost. So let's take these examples, direct material. When you see the desk bench, what items you can correlate, which material items have gone into manufacture of these desk benches. So you can very easily correlate that yes, Sun Mica has gone plywood and steel frame and paint and nails and fabricol. So cost of all these items which has got one to one relation with a cost object is called direct material cost. But you will notice there are n number of other materials which the carpenter might have used which are not identifiable with the product, which are not one to one identifiable with the product. Then 
cost of other materials which are getting consumed in the process of manufacture but these materials do not form direct part of that finished product may be called as indirect material. You may simply say indirect material is a common cost. It is incurred in common and therefore one to one relation cannot be established. So common cost is called indirect cost or overhead cost. Let us take the example of labor. Suppose I am paying a worker rupees 400 for manufacture and assembly of one desk bench. I am paying the worker at the rate of rupees 400 per desk bench manufactured and assembled. Then I can say 400 rupees is the direct labor cost per desk bench. Or suppose I am paying the workers on the basis of time. I am paying them at the rate of let us say for rupees 600 per day, let us assume. And in one day, if a worker can produce two units, two desk benches, then I can correlate that 600 rupees I have paid for one day and in one day I have got output of two units. So in 600 rupees cost, I have got two units of output. So cost per unit is 300. Then also I can call it as labor cost because labor might be paid either on time basis or on piece rate basis. In piece rate basis, the relationship is very clear. You pay them directly on per piece basis. So cost can be easily ascertained. Even if you pay them on time basis, you can calculate the proportionate cost of the time spent to manufacture one item that is called direct labor cost. But please remember there are so many other employees who are working in the organization who are not actively involved in the manufacturing process. But their services are also required. Let us say there is a supervisor who gives instructions to the worker about what is to be done today and how it is to be done. Now that supervisor supervises so many workers. So he's a common resource, common person. So for such supervisor, you are paying the salary and that salary will go to indirect labor. Just for example sake, as I am a teacher and I am teaching the students in the live batch in the classroom and the coaching institution is going to pay me on the basis of per student, X rupees per student, then my remuneration which I will get from coaching institution, that coaching institute, for coaching institution my remuneration is labor cost, for coaching institution, coaching institution will say my remuneration as direct labor cost because it is paid on the basis of number of students. However, there is other office staff right, and support staff who open the classroom, who close the classroom, clean the classroom, who handle the inquiry and administration work. Their salaries and wages for coaching institution will be indirect labor cost. Just to give you an example. So common resource cost is indirect cost. Specific resource which can be correlated one to one is direct cost. Now let's go to direct expenses. Really speaking, expenses are very difficult to correlate with cost object. Just imagine the examples of direct expenses. Why I'm saying this? The reason is expenses generally tends to be indirect. I repeat, expenses generally tends to be indirect. There are very few direct expenses. So let me give some examples of direct expense because majority expenses are indirect. In direct, uh, I'm talking about direct expenses now. Let us say for this days bench, I hired the services of a product designer and I got the design of that desk bench prepared from a professional person who is not my employee. I repeat, professional person is not an employee of my organization. So I got the design of the desk bench done from him. He might be an interior, or he might be an architect and he charged me rupees 10,000 for designing the desk bench. Now this 10,000 rupees which is cost to me is neither a material cost nor it is a labor cost. Why it is not a labor cost? Because that person is not my employee. Then it will go to what? Expenses. And these expenses are incurred for these desk benches only. And by paying rupees 10,000, Right? Suppose I have paid this 10,000 rupees for designing the desk bench and I have got 50 desk benches manufactured using that design. I got 50 desk bench produced using that design. Then the designing cost per desk bench will be rupees 200 to me. Correct? So 200 will be direct expenses per desk bench. Is that clear? Another could be outsourcing charges or subletting of the work. That is called 
part of the work you are getting done from an outside agency we call as outsourcing charges or subletting charges let us assume that i have hired another agency for just assembly of these desk benches and polishing of desk benches it means i get the desk benches produced here the parts and components i get produced on myself but to assemble them and to do the polishing and painting, I have hired another agency and I have told them that I will pay you rupees 500 for doing assembly, painting and polishing of the desk benches. Then I have to pay 500 rupees out of my pocket to an outside agency which we call as outsourcing charges. That will go in the category of direct expenses. So you may think of, there is no list given that this list of items is direct expenses. First of all, it should be an expense. It should not be material nor labor. It is an expense, but you can very easily establish the relationship between that expense and the cost object, means the product which you are manufacturing. If the relationship is convenient and can be easily established on one-to-one -one basis, it will be the it will be called as direct expenses. If it cannot be conveniently established, then it will be called as indirect expenses. And indirect expenses are many like rent, like depreciation, like electricity, and so on. There are n number of indirect expenses and that is how we get all direct cost together is called prime cost and all indirect cost together is called overheads. Now in reality what happens my dear friends if you remember the cost sheet, cost sheet was what the cost sheet which you have studied might be material plus labor plus overheads. This is the way the cost sheet is prepared generally. Now why it is prepared that way? Reason. As a direct expenses are very rare, direct expenses comes very rarely because there are very few examples of direct expenses. What people have done? People started calling this direct material as material cost. When people say material cost, please remember it is direct material. Direct labor they started just calling as labor. So what happened? And all this together is called overage. There are three elements of cost are these one, two and three all indirect expenses together is called overhead. So people practically started calling three elements of cost as material, labor and overhead. Practical elements of cost. Theoretically three elements of cost are material, labor and expenses. But practically three elements of cost are material, labor and overhead. Material by default means direct material, not indirect. Why? Because indirect material will go in the category of overheads. So when people utter the word material, actually it is direct material consumed. When people utter the word labor, it is direct labor or direct employee cost. Direct expenses they have forgotten and indirect cost together is called overage. And that is why we used to have material plus labor, we used to say prime cost and prime cost plus overage we used to say total cost. So that is how practically the three elements of cost are material, labor and overage. Now overheads are further classified into three parts, all of you might be able to remember. So overheads will classify further in three parts, further division of overheads, one is factory overheads, second is administration overheads and third is selling and distribution overheads. It is just a quick revision of intermediate, factory overheads, administration overheads and selling and distribution overheads is a further classification of indirect cost, indirect cost means further classification of overheads. So overheads basically consists of indirect material, indirect labor, indirect expenses, further classified in three parts. Now there are multiple words used for factory overheads. Factory overheads is also known as works overheads. Please remember it is works, not just work, works overheads. Also called as production overheads, also called as manufacturing overheads. So there are total four names, factory overheads, works overheads, production overheads, manufacturing overheads, all means one and the same, right? All these are indirect cost. But when indirect cost is related to manufacturing activity, we call it as factory overheads. Indirect cost means either indirect material or indirect labor or indirect expenses incurred for manufacturing activity is called factory overheads. When these indirect expenses that is indirect material, indirect labor or indirect expenses are incurred for administration activity, it is called administration overheads also called as office overheads. Another name to it is office overheads. And whatever expenses are incurred on marketing of your product or services, 
that is selling and distribution overheads. Now let us see few examples though you know it much better from your intermediate knowledge. If I take depreciation as an item of cost, depreciation of assets is an indirect expense all of you are aware. If I take depreciation of plant and machinery it will go to factory overheads. If I take depreciation of office furniture, office computer and office ACs and office equipment it will go to administration overheads. If I take depreciation of delivery van in which we distribute our finished goods, depreciation of delivery van then it will go to selling and distribution overheads. Similarly, electricity and power bill paid for factory premises will go to factory overheads. But electricity is required for office also. So electricity bill paid for office premises will go to administration overheads. Electricity bill paid for your sales office department will go to selling and distribution overheads. Similarly, there are some common employees who are working. I am not taking direct workers, please remember. One more thing click to my mind, so I will just take you to the previous slide. I will just take you to the previous slide. Please remember prime cost is calculated only up to production stage. It is always prime cost of production. People just say the word prime cost, but prime cost is always up to production stage. Means direct material required for production, direct labor required for production and direct expenses required for manufacturing activity. So prime cost is always calculated up to manufacturing stage because you can correlate it on one to one basis. So it is always a prime cost of production. Okay. Now I was on overheads actually. As I said indirect labor cost that is employees who are working in common like in manufacturing activity you have supervisor, you have production manager and other support staff who are providing their services for manufacturing activity. Their salaries and wages will go to factory overheads office staff salary entirely will go to administration overheads. Actually administration overheads has no direct relationship with each product produced. Really speaking entire administration activity, the cost of entire administration activity is called administration overheads. It means in administration you do not have a direct cost, in administration you have only indirect cost. Means entire administration cost is indirect cost that is overheads. Similarly selling and distribution activity. It is incurred after the manufacturing is over, right? Selling and distribution activity is incurred after the manufacturing activity is over. It means entire expenditure incurred on selling and distribution activity goes to the category of overheads because it has got no one to one relation in producing a product. So entire expenses incurred on selling and distribution activity, let it be material, let it be labor, let it be expenses. You will say how material is incurred, material is very rarely incurred but if you are giving out free samples right tangible items you are distributing free right you may call it as indirect material for marketing purposes. So that will go into, into selling and distribution overheads. Now dear friends really speaking these two words have got different meaning but they are clubbed into one by uh, costing people. Actually selling activity is the activity for generating the demand. Selling activity is the activity for generating the demand and distribution activity is the activity for satisfying the demand. I repeat once again, selling overheads are different, distribution overheads are different but in costing they are generally clubbed into one as a selling and distribution overheads. Selling means generation of demand and distribution means satisfying the demand. For example, selling activity that is generation of demand. Suppose I have manufactured, my company has manufactured a new mobile phone. Now how people will come to know that I have produced a new mobile phone, how it will reach to the people, how people will come to know. So I have to do some marketing, it means some selling activity, I have to do advertisement in newspaper, on television, I have to put the hoardings on the roadside and so on. Just to tell people that see this is a new product and these are the features of this product and this is the price of this product. So the expenses done on marketing, right, that is on generation of demand is called selling selling cost or selling overage. Now suppose demand is generated, you want to buy that mobile or you want to buy that product. Right? Now if you buy, want to buy that product there has to be a place where you can go pay money and take the delivery of that product. 
so that demand is to be now satisfied demand is generated due to selling activity now that demand is to be satisfied means money should come to me and product should go to you for this whatever arrangement we make and whatever expenses we incurred those expenses are called distribution overheads it means you have to create a distribution channel if i am a manufacturer then i have to appoint the uh, wholesalers or agents distributors then wholesalers then retailers and the goods has to travel physically right that is carriage outward which we call in accounts so goods have to physically move from one place to another that entire distribution channel is involve a lot of cost you need vehicles you need drivers petrol diesel what not in order to see to it that the goods reach to the customer you have to do some packing during transportation all this goes in the distribution overheads or distribution cost so that is how it is selling and distribution overheads now with the help of prime cost prime cost there are three items direct material direct labor direct expenses and overheads now we have divided in three parts that is factory overheads administration overheads and selling and distribution overheads so with this six items three direct and three indirect if we put them in a particular sequence we get a cost sheet right and all of you are aware of that cost sheet it's not new for you it's just a revision of intermediate before taking you to cost sheet i'll just try to correlate resources and cost i'll try to correlate resources with cost so costs are always incurred for consuming resources you use resources in carrying out your activity or in fulfilling your objective and each resource has a cost like as you are doing ca and you want to calculate cost of becoming ca but in the process of doing ca you are using one of the resources as vehicle the vehicle which you are using to go from one place to another the, let us say to attend the coaching classes or to attend the offices so don't you think there is a cost of using that resource called vehicle the cost of using that vehicle and the vehicle is used for becoming ca that cost will get added in the cost of becoming a chartered accountant it means all resources has got a cost right and resources are used to fulfill your objective now these resources are popularly called as 5m because they start with the letter m 5m if you remember and these 5m these five resources are starting with the letter m is material manpower machinery managements management's effort and time in managing the business and market so these are called 5m or five resources known as costing and each resource has a cost and the cost involved for material resource is called material cost only for manpower resource the cost incurred is called labor cost or employee cost for machinery resource if you are using machinery in manufacturing you will incur depreciation of machinery repairs maintenance of machinery power will be consumed to run the machinery all these cost will go to manufacturing overheads that is factory overheads towards use of machinery entire of management efforts and time will go in administration overheads and once your goods are ready you have to market it you have to because unless you sell it you won't get money so to take it to the market whatever efforts are required will go to selling and distribution overheads so these are the resources and these are the cost involved if you want you may take it down it's a relationship between resources used and the cost involved for using those resources i've just given you some time i'm waiting if those who are interested may take it down quickly and then i'll take you to the cost sheet and now you'll remember how we used to prepare the cost sheet we used to say material cost plus labor cost is prime cost prime cost plus factory overheads administration overheads and selling and distribution overheads that is how we used to calculate total cost
ओके फ्रेंड्स आई एम टेकिंग यू टू कॉस्ट शीट नाउ सो सिंपल कॉस्ट शीट फॉर्मेट आई एम डिस्कसिंग सिंस सी ए फाइनल दे आर नॉट गोइंग टू आस्क यू टू प्रिपेयर द कॉस्ट शीट बेसिकली मीन्स कॉस्ट शीट रिलेटेड क्वेश्चन मे नॉट बी देयर बट दैट फॉर्मेट यू शुड कीप इट इन माइंड बिकॉज यू हैव टू प्रेजेंट द डेटा इन दिस फॉर्मेट पर्टिकुलर्स एंड रुपीज वन इज डायरेक्ट मटीरियल दैट इज डायरेक्ट मटेरियल कंज्यूम्ड इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ मैन्युफैक्चर डायरेक्ट लेबर and direct expenses if you add these three direct expenses will be very rare but if it is given in the question you have to take it together these three will be called as prime cost so total of these three is called prime cost now we'll add one by one overheads which all of you are aware of right i'm just trying to revise add factory overheads you will get factory cost prime cost plus factory overheads you will get factory cost i have seen sometimes students making a mistake ca final students they say factory overheads and factory cost is one and the same what query i have got sir there is no difference between factory overheads and factory cost i think there is lot of difference prime cost plus factory overheads together is called factory cost factory cost plus administration overheads is called cost of production factory cost plus administration over is is called cost of production and cost of production plus selling and distribution over is is called cost of sales cost of sales is your total cost because all the three overheads are added now all three indirect costs are added so three direct cost and all three indirect costs are added at the end you get cost of sales that is total cost add profit or deduct loss as the case may be we'll assume there is a profit so cost of sales add profit you'll get sales or sales price this is a simple cost sheet format which we have revised quickly now we'll move little ahead i'll go to the word costing we started our journey with the word cost correct i had started the journey with the word cost now we go little ahead we go to the word costing now right so let us add ing to it let us add ing to the word cost but the meaning will change substantially costing may be defined as the technique and process of ascertaining cost costing may be defined as the technique or process of ascertaining cost now this word is important ascertainment of cost please remember to ascertain means to calculate to ascertain means to calculate the procedure through which we calculate cost that process of calculating cost is called costing are you getting it cost was only monetary value of all sacrifices made to achieve an objective but there has to be a way to calculate that cost that way the technique or the process of calculation of cost of ascertainment of cost is called costing like you have reached to ca final stage so there is already a cost incurred for on you to come up to ca final if i ask you a question how much is the cost incurred till now you are going to become chartered accountant and there is a cost of becoming chartered accountant but how much cost you have incurred till date i am using the word cost incurred a cost is already incurred to reach to ca final stage so you will say sir give us some time we have not yet calculated it means cost is incurred but not yet ascertained means cost incurred is different cost ascertained is different now cost ascertained is whatever cost you have incurred make a list of it and take the total then you will be able to ascertain the cost now even if you don't ascertain you don't calculate the cost of becoming ca cost is still incurred so cost incurred is one thing and cost ascertained is another thing now the way or procedure of ascertainment of cost is called costing it may further be said as the another definition of costing is costing is classifying recording and appropriate allocation of expenditure for determination of cost of product or service this product or service we call as cost object whose cost is required to be ascertained a product or a service is our cost object so we have to determine or ascertain the cost of cost object in the process of ascertaining this cost there are three steps 
one you have to first classify the cost i think that is what we did just now before this definition of costing what we did we classified the entire cost in first three parts material labor and expenses correct then each cost we further classified into direct cost and indirect cost and then indirect cost together we further classified in three parts factory overheads administration overheads and selling and distribution overheads this was classification of cost so once in the procedure of calculation of cost the one first step is classify the cost now you have to do the recording recording means you have to maintain the books of accounts record it somewhere how much data you will keep it in the memory so whatever cost is incurred is recorded somewhere which you used to call as cost ledger accounting you have to do the accounting and put a record somewhere so that later on that record will be used for ascertainment of cost so that is step number 2 classify the cost put it in your record keep the accounting records third appropriate allocation of expenditure this entire sentence appropriate allocation of expenditure is nothing but absorption of overheads your overheads topic see there is no difficulty in ascertainment of direct cost because direct cost has one to one relationship with the product or the cost object but what about common expenses how much rent factory rent i should charge for manufacture of one desk bench it's very difficult because rent is incurred in common so through overheads chapter of your intermediate if you remember those common cost called overheads we used to calculate appropriate share of overheads for charging to one product that is called appropriate allocation of expenditure it is common expenditure common cost that is called overheads so when you charge the indirect cost to a product you are able to ascertain the cost direct cost plus indirect cost indirect cost charging is appropriate allocation of expenditure and that is how we ascertain the cost so these three steps in the process of ascertainment of cost is explained here that is costing now there are various methods of costing now what is it now do you think the way i am calculating the cost for desk bench manufacturing the way i will calculate the cost for aircraft manufacturing the way i will calculate cost for software uh, produced for a particular client right do you think all this will be same don't you think there will be a different process of ascertainment of cost for different different industry and yes that is what the point is for manufacturing industry the procedure for calculation of cost will be different for service industry the procedure for calculation of cost will be different and in manufacturing also industry also depending upon the type of manufacturing industry you have to apply different ways of ascertainment of cost now first of all costing is the process of ascertainment of cost but if the way of ascertainment of cost is different the different ways are called different methods of costing so there are different ways or different methods of costing for ascertainment of cost in different different industries and now if i put the list of certain names of methods of costing you will be able to recollect your entire syllabus of ca intermediate it is nothing but job costing batch costing contract costing process costing or operation costing joint product by product costing unit single or output costing operating or service costing and multiple costing these are various methods of costing and this was mainly your ca intermediate syllabus now we'll discuss one by one in brief naturally because this is not is what i have to teach at ca final level but i have to prepare the solid base solid background for taking you to ca final level like when we construct the building the foundation should be strong so that the building can be erected on a solid foundation so i am just trying to check the foundation right that is your intermediate knowledge and i am trying to revise in case if you have forgotten if you are very comfortable about it absolutely there is no problem that is good on the contrary okay so i'll briefly take you through the discussion job costing costing is ascertainment of cost when we want to ascertain the cost job wise job wise it means we are interested in calculating cost of each job 
then we use job costing. Now, once a funny question had appeared from one of the student, he said, sir, job means the job which will be joining after becoming CA. I said, no, that is also a job which you will join after becoming a CA. But here I am talking about a manufacturing industry. In manufacturing industry, a job is one which is received from customer. Means job is the work which you have received from the customer and you have to manufacture and deliver the goods as per the order of a customer. Simply speaking, any industry where goods are produced as per the specific needs and requirement of customer, such industry is known as jobbing industry. I repeat once again, jobbing industry is one where goods are manufactured or services are provided as per the specific need and requirement of customer. So, customer gives you an order which is called job order. Customer gives you the order, he will give you the specification and as per his specification and order, you will produce and deliver the goods to the customer. And each customer's order will be different. So, each such order received from customer is called job. And you have to ascertain the cost job wise. Just to give you a simple example. If I am a furniture manufacturer, but I manufacture the furniture as per the needs of customer. And there are three customers which I have got. Customer A want the furniture of his classroom. He want the classroom desk benches to be produced from me. Customer B has purchased a residential house. So, he want the residential furniture that is bed and sofa set and the dressing table and so on, right? The shelves, the residential furniture, the type of furniture we, which we need in residential premises. And C, customer C has purchased a shop and he is going to set up a medical shop there. So, he want the furniture for that medical shop. Now, in all the three cases, I am going to manufacture furniture, but every customer's requirement is different. One want classroom furniture, another want residential house furniture, third one want the medical shop furniture. So, each customer is different, each order is different. I have to calculate cost for each customer separately because I will be giving quotation also to each customer separately. Now, each of these three customers are called three jobs, job A, job B, job C. And I have to maintain job wise record for job costing. See records have to be maintained. The procedure of cost is classifying recording and appropriate allocation of expenditure. So, I will maintain job A account for recording purpose in accounts, job A account. Whatever cost I am incurring, direct material, direct labor, direct expenses, I will charge to this account. I will charge overheads using appropriate overhead recovery rate or overhead absorption rate. I will get total cost. I will get some revenue from the customer for selling that job and difference between revenue and cost. Cost is on debit side, revenue is on credit side. I will get job wise profit or loss. It means when my objective is to ascertain cost of each job separately and profit of each job separately, it means I am using job costing. Our main objective is to ascertain cost of the job. See, after ascertainment of cost, profit calculation is very easy because you have to just deduct it from your sales price. So, you will maintain job A account, job B account, job C account. That is called job costing, that is job wise record. Ascertainment of cost for each job separately is job costing. So, any industry where goods are manufactured or services are provided as per the specific needs and requirement of customer, we use job costing. Another variation of job costing is batch costing. Batch costing is used in an industry where goods are manufactured in batches. Batches means in lots, means in groups. So, <clears throat> wherever goods are manufactured in batches, we use batch costing. We will take an example. You will notice the medicines are generally manufactured in batches. On medicine, the batch number is written month and year of manufacture is written, if you check carefully. So, suppose I am manufacturing tablet A at present. I am manufacturing tablet A at present. And I generally manufacture this tablet A in a batch size of 1000 pieces, means 1000 tablets. 
means once I run the machine, I produce 1000 units of that tablet. So I'm manufacturing it in batches, one batch of 1000 units. If you remember in CA intermediate, you have studied economic batch size. How to calculate that economic batch size using square root formula in batch costing you have studied. Alright, we'll be using that also. In CA final, you will need everything. You will need economic batch size, you will need economic order quantity, EOQ also. EOQ was the topic which you discussed in material cost chapter, material cost in CA intermediate. I will require entire CA intermediate, my dear friends, for CA final. Okay, let's come back to batch costing. In one batch, I have produced 1000 tablets. So I will maintain batch wise record. Again, I will keep the account batch A account. Again, all direct cost, direct material, direct labor, direct expenses and overheads. So I will get total cost, total cost. But this total cost is not for one tablet. It is for thousand tablets. Suppose this cost comes to, let us say total cost comes to 5000 after charging overheads. So in 5000 rupees, I have manufactured 1000 tablets. So cost per tablet will be 5000 divided by 1000. So cost per unit will be 5. But I got the cost of the entire batch. From there I got cost per tablet. And suppose my packing unit is of 10 tablets. Means I manufacture strips of 10, 10 tablets. Generally you will notice the medicine comes in the strip of 10 tablets. Then 5 per unit into 10 tablets, 1 strip. So 50 rupees is the cost per strip. Cost per strip. To this, I will add my profit margin, my desired profit margin. If my cost is 50 rupees per strip, add a desired profit margin, you will get selling price. Add your indirect taxes, that is GST and all, and you will get your MRP, MRP per strip. So here the goods are manufactured in batches and therefore we have to maintain the batch wise record. Hence it is called batch costing. We go further, contract costing. Contract costing is another variation of job costing. Contract costing is another variation of job costing. See, when we undertake the constructional, mechanical, engineering, erectional contracts for our customers, for our clients, then we use contract costing. So suppose I am a big contractor or construction company. I got one contract to develop an airport, right? Construction of an airport is one contract I got. Construction of dam is another contract. So A is construction of airport. B is construction of dam. C is construction of a flyover bridge. I have got these work orders from the government, let us say. Government is my customer and different state governments have given me different, different contracts. One contract I got for airport construction, another is for dam construction and C contract is for flyover bridge construction. Now, don't you think I have to maintain contract wise record for each contract separately, contract A account. If you remember, we used to prepare these accounts, contract A account, contract B account. So contract A account, I will prepare and I will keep the record of cost here and I will take the revenue here, right? So you'll get contract wise profit or loss. If you are able to recall, we used to call that profit of incomplete contract as notional profit if you remember if the contract is incomplete the profit earned on incomplete contract was known as a notional profit because it is not actual profit work is not yet complete so contract wise record i will maintain contract a account b account contract c account to ascertain the cost and profit of each contract separately it means i am using contract costing now just said each contract is a job it is very similar to job costing each contract is a job, then why there has to be two separate methods, job costing separate and contract costing separate? Means we can use job costing method for contract costing also because each contract is a job. It is executed as per the need and requirement of customer, as per the order of customer. You might be having answer to this. Job costing and contract costing are very similar, but still there are two different methods. The reason is in job costing, the time required to complete the job is less. Less means less than one year. It may take few days, few weeks or few months to complete a job. But a contract may run over more than one year. It means if the con job costing, contract costing, the only difference is duration involved to execute. Duration, that is time. I would say long time duration jobs are called contracts. If the job is for a long term duration, treat it as contract. 
and if the contract is of short term duration of less than one year treat it as job and then why we need to different methods first of all is the duration is the distinguishing criteria in contract costing if this construction of bridge is going to take five years I need to design a method to calculate profit for each year, year one how much profit, year two how much profit. It means though the work is not complete, it is still incomplete, but still I want to record the cost and profit in my books of accounts. So to break the long term contract into small small parts on yearly basis or quarterly basis, you have to study the contract costing. And if you remember in contract costing you had studied work certified, work uncertified if you remember. right? That is work done only till date though the work is not complete. Therefore, job and contract costing is different. Process costing also known as operation costing. It is used in processing industry. Any industry where goods are manufactured in different stages means the raw material passes through stage 1 that is process 1 then it goes to process 2 then it goes to process 3 then it goes to process 4 and it becomes let us say finished product. So, wherever goods pass through a pre laid down sequence and it goes on getting produced in different different stages of production, these different stages of production is called as processing industry. right? And then you have to maintain process wise record, you have done it in intermediate, we used to prepare process A account if you remember, right? process A account, process B account, process C account and if you remember output of process A used to become input for process B that is output of previous process becomes input for next process right? and output of process B will become input for process C and so on and there is a continuous production here. The production is going on on a continuous basis but on in stages right? then any such industry we use process costing where we maintain process wise record and we used to get cost at each stage, you used to get cost per unit for process A, cost per unit at process B, cost per unit at process C and in the last process, if it is the last process then you will get the cost of finished product that is total cost and cost is also transferred from previous process to next process. So, cost gets accumulated over the different processes. The examples could be sugar factory is one of the examples of processing industry. Right? Sugar is manufactured in four stages. First process is crushing where sugar cane is crushed and juice is extracted that is crushing process. This output of first process goes to second process that is sugar cane go, juice goes to the second process. Second process is boiling and cleaning. The sugar cane juice is boiled and cleaned with the help of chemicals. Impurities are removed and the cleaned juice goes to crystallization process crystallization. Crystallization process means this liquid juice is converted into white sugar granules or crystals. It is a lengthy process. It does not happen all of a sudden. It takes time to convert that juice, sugar cane juice. It slowly and slowly becomes whiter and thicker and at the end of crystallization process you will find the white sugar coming out of the machine. And the last process is weighing and packing. You have to weigh the sugar cane bags, uh, sorry sugar bags. Generally, sugar is uh, sugar is uh, stored or uh, packed in gunny bags that is jute bags generally and each bag is of 100 kg. So, that is one quintal. So, the sugar which comes out is caught in those gunny bags or jute bags and there is a weighing scale kept. The moment it is 100 kg, another bag is put and it can be automated machine also which can automatically weigh 100 kg and will move to another bag and the sugar and then the bags are stitched. So, it is weighing, weighing 100 kg and then packing and your uh, sugar is ready for delivery in bags of 100 kg each. So, you have to maintain the record for each process, process 1, 2, 3, 4. So, if you are maintaining process wise record, it is called process costing. The substitute word for process is operation. Each process may be called as each operation also. Joint product by product costing. This topic is linked with process costing. I repeat joint product by product costing is linked to process costing means what? If in a particular process you get more than one product at a time, it means if you get multiple products from common process, so it is connected to process costing. Process is common, input is common, but the outputs are more than one. When it happens in any processing industry then in addition to process costing, then in addition to process costing 
you have to use joint product by product costing also so when goods are produced jointly out of a common process we call them as either joint products or by products i hope you remember the difference between joint product and by product both are produced together but if the economic value if monetary value of those goods in the market is higher we call them as joint products if the economic value of that product which is produced jointly in a process if that economic value or market value is very low we call it as by product just for example sake again i'll take you back to the sugar factory that is sweet example first process was crushing where sugar cane is crushed when you crush the sugar cane you get two things one is sugar cane juice which goes to the next process and one is the leftover that leftover is called as bagas leftover is called as bagas that is the remaining waste when you extract the uh, sugar cane juice from sugar cane so that leftover has got a name it is called bagas and it is treated as a by product because bagas won't fetch you much money now you may say that it is waste just throw it out no that bagas is useful it can be sold to paper industry paper industry will buy bagas from sugar factory and they will convert it into paper pulp and that paper pulp can be converted into paper so bagas is a input raw material for paper industry getting it even bagas can be used as a fuel right if bagas is lit in the furnace furnace means bhatti in hindi right furnace is a place where <coughs> fire is lit so bagas is used as a fuel to lit the fire and water is boiled and once you boil the water it generates a steam and if that steam is passed through turbines it generates electricity it means bagas is used to generate electricity also my dear friend bagas is a input fuel used to boil water right and boiling of water will generate steam and use of steam will rotate the turbines and rotation of turbine generates the electricity so bagas is used as a input for either generation of electricity or for manufacture of paper and there could be some more uses probably some people can manufacture particle boards also using bagas so bagas is a by product one more example i'll give in second phase sugar factory only first was crushing second is cleaning and boiling in the cleaning and boiling process we remove the impurities from that sugar cane juice when we boil that sugar cane juice we remove the impurities and it is kept at one place it is not thrown that impurity which is removed in the process of boiling and cleaning is called molasses is called as molasses and this molasses is a input material for distillery so molasses is also a by product of sugar factory like bagas is a by product of sugar factory molasses is also by product of sugar factory molasses is sold to distilleries and distillery through distillation process there is a distillation process where input is molasses through distillation process it is converted into alcohol and then alcohol can be converted into variety of products like it could be converted into liquor it could be converted into industrial alcohol medicinal alcohol right those spirit lamps which we use it can be uh, in the laboratory science laboratory that spirit is also manufactured from here or when doctor gives us the injection he uses that spirit right to clean it to sanitize the place where injection is to be given so that spirit also comes from uh, molasses through distillation process even ethanol ethanol is a very good fuel ethanol is nowadays mixed with the petrol right in some proportion and it is a very good fuel environmental friendly fuel that ethanol is also produced from molasses molasses is input right which goes to the distillery so molasses is another by product of a sugar factory and one more last example because this is just intermediate i'm not going to repeat it again and again could be oil refinery where crude oil crude oil taken from oil well right crude oil taken from oil well this crude oil passes through refining process petroleum oil i am saying crude oil taken from oil well is a refined through refining process and the refining process generates multiple of products so when this crude oil is refined you get petrol you get diesel you get naphtha you get kerosene you get tar right and n number of products you get right in the process of refining the crude oil so crude oil is input refining is a process and the process generate multiple products called as joint products this much is more than enough unit single or output costing 
this is the simplest method of costing and therefore you will never find a question on this method in your CA intermediate. It is the method of costing used in an industry where only single product is manufactured, only one type of product. So where the output is single, single output it is also called as or single unit costing, these three words are used in combination. So single output, single unit costing is the method of costing used in an industry where only one product homogeneous product is manufactured, means the product should not be different in size, not different in color, not different in shape, exactly same product, identical product is manufactured throughout the year. If it ha happens in any industry, then you can use this single unit or single output costing method, because cal calculation of cost is very simple, therefore never the question is asked, just take the total cost because output is only one, total cost divided by total output and you will get cost per unit, very very simple, what institute will ask in the exam, so they have never asked a question on this at intermediate level I am saying because cost has to be given in the question paper, output also has to be given in the question paper and calculator is allowed to be used by you, so nothing great, but that is single output costing, just to give you an example, electricity generating companies. Electricity generating companies generate how many varieties of electricity tell me, is ele electricity is electricity. So if they want to calculate cost per unit that is cost per kilowatt hour of electricity, the unit for measurement of electricity is kWh, kilowatt hour, we call it as units, we have consumed 300 units of electricity in one month, so 300 units means 300 kilowatt hours, so that is the unit, cost unit for measuring the electricity. If you are interested in calculating cost per kilowatt hour of electricity, what you do? Take the total cost in the numerator for one year, total cost in the numerator for one year. In the denominator take total number of units of electricity generated and you will get cost per unit of electricity. So very simple, but it can be used only in such industry where only single product exactly identical is manufactured. Very few industries are there where we can use this. Operating or service costing. We used to call it as operating costing or service costing. This is the method of costing used in service industry. Service industry could be education is a service industry, hospital is a service industry, aviation is a service industry, courier is a service industry, hotel that is accommodation is a service industry, goods transport is a service industry and so on. And you have dealt with in intermediate if you remember, you used to calculate cost of transportation of one ton of goods or cost of transporting one passenger. So you used to solve the question, it could be goods transport, passenger transport, it could be hotels, it could be hospitals and so on. So in service industry we use operating costing or service costing and multiple costing. Please remember my dear friend, there is no method called multiple costing, no separate method called multiple costing. It means you will not find a separate chapter as multiple costing, but when we use more than one method of costing together. If in a particular industry, we are unable to use a single method of costing, but we have to make use of combination of one or two methods of costing. It means when you use multiple methods of costing to ascertain the cost, then you are said to be following multiple costing. So multiple costing itself is not a separate method. It is use of multiple methods of costing. So out of one to seven method, if you have to use more than one method, together, then you are said to be using multiple costing. Now this multiple costing is generally used in assembly line industry, assembly line industry. Now you will say what is assembly line industry? Assembly line industry is any such industry where components and parts are first manufactured and then they are assembled together to manufacture finished product. I repeat assembly line industry is one where multiple costing is used. An assembly line industry is one where components and parts are first produced and then they are joined or assembled together to manufacture a finished product. Let us take automobile companies who manufacture vehicles, it could be a two wheeler, it could be a three wheeler, it could be a car, it could be a truck, it could be a tempo, it could be a bus, let us say Tata Motors for example. Now they manufacture different variety of vehicles and each vehicle requires so many parts and components. Now a particular part might be manufactured in batches, so you have to use batch costing, 
to ascertain cost of that part. Engine might be manufactured each one individually. So it could be a job costing also. You might be using job costing if it is produced individually. Some components parts might be manufactured through processing. So you may have to use process costing. right? It means you may have to use job costing plus process costing plus batch costing to calculate the cost of those parts and components and then these different parts and components are assembled together to manufacture your finished product. The finished product could be a truck, could be a bus, could be a car. It means you cannot rely on only one method because your industry, the nature of your industry is so complex that you cannot make use of only single method to ascertain cost of a uh, cost of a cost object. So you have to make use of multiple methods and when we use multiple methods, it could be a multiple costing. I will give you another example of a service industry. Let us say a hospital. In hospital, you have to make use combination of job costing and operating costing that is service costing. Hospital is a service industry, no doubt about it, but some services are common. In hospital, some services are common. For common services, you use operating costing. And for one to one service, patient wise service, like how much medicine is consumed by that patient, right? Expert doctor's fees operation fees for that patient, these are one to one cost that is job costing, identifiable cost in each customer is a job. So you have to make use of job costing and operating costing together that is you are using multiple costing. So these type of things can happen. These are different methods of costing my dear friend. Now we go to techniques of costing. Techniques of costing is one where your syllabus also lies of CA final because in CA final you have got some of these techniques. Techniques of costing are marginal costing, standard costing and budget and budgetary control. These are three prominent techniques of costing and all three are there in your syllabus. You have marginal costing in the in chapter number six which is called decision making because marginal costing technique is used for decision making. The name of chapter in your syllabus is decision making but decision making is done using marginal costing technique. Cost control is done using standard costing technique. Cost control is the objective which you will achieve using standard costing technique. And overall managerial control can be achieved through budget and budgetary control. For overall smooth functioning of the organization, you have to use the technique called budget and budgetary control. So marginal costing, standard costing, budget, budgetary control are the three techniques which you had studied in CA intermediate, but you will be studying it now also in CA final at a little higher level or international level. So all these three chapters are included in your CA final syllabus but at a higher level. And naturally I will start from intermediate level just to brush up the concepts of marginal costing, standard costing and budget and then I will take you to CA final level. As I told you to bridge the gap between CA intermediate and CA final syllabus. To bridge that gap I will take you smoothly from intermediate to final level. So, now what is the difference between methods and techniques of costing? That is very interesting. Methods are industry specific, methods are industry specific and techniques are common for all industry. Like if I am a contractor and I am doing construction of a bridge, I have to use contract costing. But while using contract costing, I can use marginal costing technique also, standard costing technique also, budgetary control technique also. Means techniques are common for all industries. Suppose I am man a manufacturer of sugar, so I am using process costing. So method I am using process costing but along with process costing I can use marginal costing technique, standard costing technique, budgetary control technique. So techniques are general in nature can be used for all industry and methods are specific in nature. A particular method is used for a particular industry also. If I am a sugar manufacturer I cannot use contract costing or I cannot use job costing. I have to use process costing only. So methods are specific. Techniques are general in nature. Another one, the objective of methods. Methods of costing, the objective was ascertainment of cost, I think. Ascertainment of cost is the basic purpose of the methods of costing. And the purpose or objective of techniques of costing is written already on the screen. The marginal costing technique, the objective is to use it for business decision making. Purpose of standard costing is to use it for cost control. And purpose of budgetary control technique is to use for overall managerial control and smooth running of the organization. Now we will discuss few 
terms or few concepts, right? Actually, there are so many. I have told you, you can download a dictionary, costing dictionary from Google Play Store, as I told you, right? Install that dictionary. You'll find the name costing dictionary by C. R. Rakesh Agarwal, and you can revise so many terms if you want to. If you are not comfortable, then if you are very good, then there is absolutely no problem. Very good at conceptual level. I am discussing few important concepts which we will need in CA final. So one is explicit cost versus implicit cost. I will just put a table in front of you. Explicit cost and implicit cost. Just go through it then I will discuss. Just go through it then I will discuss it with you. I think our today's lecture will be consumed in just revising the basics. So I gave you instructions earlier, few instructions, beginning instructions and revision of CA intermediate. Gone through, explicit cost is also known as out of pocket cost, the cost which you actually incur out of pocket, it is actual cost. This cost is used in accounting as well as in decision making at both the places. Explicit cost is actual cost which is used in accounting also, decision making also. Some examples are actual rent paid. If this classroom is hired by me, then I have to pay the rent to the landlord. So that rent paid will be my explicit cost. Just one example, one example. Salary paid to my teaching, uh, salary paid to my staff, non-teaching staff, right? that will be my explicit cost. Now what is implicit cost and how it is different? Implicit cost is a hidden cost also known as imputed cost, also known as opportunity cost. Please remember implicit cost is used only in decision making not used in accounting. See explicit cost was used in accounting as well as decision making, implicit cost is used only in decision making. And our CA final main syllabus is decision making. So we will be using this cost also in decision making. Means in addition to explicit cost, we will be using implicit cost also. Some examples are given which I will further explain. Notional rent. Notional itself means not actual. If something is not actual, it is called notional. Like notional profit in contract costing, which is not actual profit. So notional rent or own salary, right, own salary salary paid by a proprietor to himself, we never pay it. So it is not an actual cost, but it is a notional cost. I will try to explain it through an example. I will try to explain it through an example, try to understand. Suppose I own the premises, I have got classroom which is owned by me. So do I have to pay rent to anyone? No. So will I debit rent to profit and loss account? Naturally no. It will never come in accounting because when I have not spent money on rent, how I will debit it to the books of accounts. Accounting is done always with actual cost. We never do it with a notional cost. So the example, just to explain, the example is that I have got my own classroom owned by me in which I conduct the coaching classes of CA. I teach the subject of costing. At the end of the year, when I prepared my profit and loss account, my profit and loss account showed me a profit of rupees, let us say 10 lakh. My profit and loss account showed me a profit of rupees 10 lakhs. So I, I have shown that PNL account to one of my friend, one of my friend who is also a CA. I told him that see, in one year of operation, I have earned a profit of rupees 10 lakh. Don't you think I am doing very well? He said, yes, you are doing very well, but you have not debited rent. I said because I am not paying rent, it is owned premises, so I don't have to pay rent. He said okay. Now my friend is telling me that actually you have made a loss of 2 lakh. You should not conduct the coaching classes, you should stop. I said what shit you are saying, my profit and loss account is certified by chartered accountant. It's audited result, it's showing 10 lakh rupees profit. How you can say that I am making a loss of 2 lakh? He said see, as your premises are owned by you, Suppose you don't use these premises, if you don't conduct the coaching classes and you give these premises on rent to someone else, 
you can easily earn a rent of rupees 1 lakh per month that is 12 lakh per annum you can easily earn a rent of rupees 12 lakh per annum at the rate of 1 lakh per month i said what difference it makes he said then you are a fool my friend is telling me that i am a fool because in order to earn 10 lakh i have lost an opportunity to earn 10, 12 lakh don't you think so in order to earn 10 lakh by conducting coaching classes on my own i should have rented it by and rent earned by me would have been 12 lakh this 12 lakh is called notional rent also known as opportunity cost i lost an opportunity of rupees 12 lakh to earn this 10 lakh and therefore my friend has correctly said that i have made a loss of 2 lakh because to earn 10 lakh i am losing 12 lakh so net i am losing 2 lakh so don't you think my decision has gone wrong i should not have conducted classes on my own but i should have given the premises on rent to someone else and therefore i said in decision making this implicit cost or hidden cost or imputed cost or notional cost or opportunity cost is important otherwise your decisions will go wrong am i right our decisions will go wrong otherwise so we don't do accounting with implicit cost because there is no voucher there is no actual outflow of cash but for decision making implicit cost is important if you ignore implicit cost your decisions will go wrong and that is what is important in ca final because we'll be considering all implicit costs wherever required in decision making let's take one more example of salary right let us say two of my friends two of my friends they got married they didn't do ca they are intelligent people so they didn't get involved in doing ca so they got married earlier so i had been to the function marriage reception of mr a who is one of my friend and mr b another of my friend right both of them got married by the time i did my ca but they are very good friends of mine so i asked them I asked, hey, how much money you got from your father-in-law in marriage? So he said, my father-in-law gifted me 10 lakh. I asked the same question to B because he got married after a few more months. So B said that as A had taken 10 lakh, I also requested my father-in-law to give me a gift of 10 lakh. So I also got 10 lakh. I said, very good. So both these people, A and B got 10, 10 lakh. I told them what you did with this 10 lakh. Tell me. A said, see, I simply invested this money. I kept it in mutual fund. I invested this 10 lakh rupees of money in mutual fund in the name of my wife. And in one year, I have generated a 10% return on mutual fund. 10% return means 1 lakh rupees. Okay. So A has earned on 10 lakh rupees investment, he has earned 1 lakh. I said, very good. Well done. I said now B, what you did? B said that I invested this 10 lakh in the business and I started my own business. I said that's very good. If you have started your own business, show me your profit and loss account. B has shown me his profit and loss account after one year. He in one year by investing rupees 10 lakh in the business, he has earned 5 lakh rupees of profit. So I said that's very good. You have earned 5 lakh. This fellow has earned only 1 lakh. So well done, well done. I told B. Because on 10 lakh, this fellow has earned 1 lakh. And on 10 lakh investment, this fellow has earned 5 lakh. So naturally, B has done better. So I congratulated him. I said, you are a very smart person. Now, A felt bad. A felt bad. He said, actually, you should congratulate me, not B. You should congratulate me means A. Because I am doing better than B. I said, how come you are doing better than B? You have earned only 1 lakh. He has earned 5 lakh on the same investment of 10 lakh how you are better than him so a explained me the same concept of implicit cost a said that as i have invested money in mutual fund i don't have to do anything physically that mutual fund manager manages my money and using my education and skill i am doing a job and on that job i am earning 50000 rupees per month 50000 per month means 6 lakhs per annum i said what difference it makes so he said, see, I am earning 6 lakhs. B is equally qualified. Our qualification is same. B is also putting the same efforts. But whether B has debited his own salary to PNL account, 
I said, how he can debit his own salary? Because we never pay to ourselves. And if we pay to ourselves, it is called drawings. It is not debited to PL, it is debited to capital account. So he said, when he has not debited his salary, don't you think he lost an opportunity to earn 6 lakh because he is equally qualified? The value of his time is equivalent to 6 lakh. I am doing a job. There I am devoting my time. But B is devoting his entire time to his business. So he lost an opportunity to do a job and earn 6 lakhs. So in order to earn 5 lakh profit, he has lost an opportunity to earn 6 lakh rupees. That is cost of his time. That is called opportunity cost. And therefore he is suffering a loss of 1 lakh. I think what A says makes sense. So in decision making it makes sense, but we never debit proprietor salary to PL account. So own salary I said is implicit cost and salary paid to staff, staff would be explicit cost that is actual cost. I repeat in decision making you have to consider explicit cost as well as implicit cost both. Are you getting it? If I give you last example for implicit explicit cost, if I tell you what is the cost of doing CA? Suppose you have become chartered accountant and I am telling you to calculate cost of doing CA. What you will do? Which cost you will calculate? You will calculate the cost of tuition fees, exam fees paid to the institute, registration fees paid to the institute, books, notebooks, use of vehicle and so on. And you will give me a total that so and so amount is incurred. But who will consider the opportunity cost which you have lost? Opportunity cost means? Because you are doing CA, you were deprived of doing so many other things. Your entire energy got consumed in doing CA. I'll just use one sentence of Hindi, right, which I had used at one place to explain this concept, right. I'm sorry for those who don't understand Hindi. CA banne mein, CA banne mein kharcha kuch hazaro mein lagta hai. CA banne mein kharcha kuch hazaro mein lagta hai. Lekin jawani puri lag jati hai. Jawani, puri lag jati hai. Now my dear friends, wo kharcha kuch hazaro mein lagta is explicit cost, that is out of pocket cost. And your time, efforts and energy, which, ge which is getting consumed, which I said in Hindi as jawani puri lag jati hai, that is implicit cost, that is hidden cost. And that is a very big cost in doing CA, right? You are unable to watch cricket, you are unable to play cricket, you are unable to enjoy your college days because whole day you are involved in doing studies for CA, attending classes and doing articleship. So don't you think other opportunities are lost, other sacrifices are made, which are hidden, which are difficult to count in money terms, but those sacrifices are also made. And therefore CA course is difficult. CA course is difficult if you consider implicit cost. Otherwise CA course is very cheap if you consider only explicit cost. If you consider out of pocket cost which you have incurred minus stipend received from your boss, then CA course is the cheapest course in this world. Then why all people don't do the CA course when it comes to decision making? I repeat once again, if you consider only explicit cost of doing CA, it is the cheapest and best course. If you take only compulsory fees of institute, exam fees and registration fees minus stipend received in 3 years of articleship, on the contrary, you will be in surplus in doing CA. Why all people don't do it when it is the best and cheapest course? Because in decision making, they consider implicit cost also, the efforts and the time required. So decision making implicit cost is important. Anyway, I'll take you further. Another term, small term, cost unit. It is the smallest unit of measurement of cost. Smallest unit in which we express the cost. We measure and express the cost. I'll give you some examples, right? If you can recollect. Just read this. This unit in which we express the cost, it is used to express the cost of each unit of product or service. For example, we say sometimes cost per kg, that is cost per kilogram. So kilogram is a cost unit, which we use to express the cost. If I say, for example, I am a manufacturer and if I just say my cost is rupees 2800, what you will understand by 2800? I am not using the unit, cost unit. 2800 is okay, but what? So I should say 2800 per 100 kg bag of sugar, then it makes sense. So 2800 per bag, that one bag is a cost unit, then only it makes sense. So like cost per kg, cost per meter, it could be cost per liter, it could be cost per cubic feet, 
cubic feet is used for gases for wood right so these are examples of cost unit in service industry we used to use cost per ton kilometer for goods transport if you remember when i say my cost is rupees at 10 per ton kilometer for transportation industry it means cost of transporting one ton of goods up to one kilometer distance is 10 rupees it is called composite cost unit because two two units are used ton that is weight and kilometer is a distance means weight and distance two units are used together when two units are used together we call it as composite cost unit composite cost unit and these were single cost unit just kg just meters are single cost unit but when we use two units together it is composite cost unit in passenger transport we used to calculate cost per passenger kilometer that is cost per passenger per kilometer cost per passenger per kilometer in hotel industry we used to use room day room day is another example of composite cost unit it's per room per day if i say the cost is rupees 1800 per room day it means if the guest occupies the room for one room for one day then the cost to me is 1800 that is 1800 per room per day generally these composite cost units are used in service industry in which we express the cost and based on this cost we decide the room tariff for hotel suppose i may be charging a customer rupees 3000 per room day this is called a room tariff this is called room tariff for hotel industry if you sometimes go to hotel uh, for accommodation purpose the rate will be quoted on per room per day basis my dear friends so this is cost unit always express the cost in per unit basis then only it makes logic it only makes sense okay so, so single unit and composite units this is all intermediate revision my dear friends this is the discussion or quick revision of intermediate which we have finished my dear friends actually now we have to start with our main chapter i am going to start from chapter 6 as i told you i am going to begin my journey from decision making chapter chapter 6 then chapter 7 pricing decision and then chapter 1 2 3 4 5 but i think today i have already consumed lot of your time in giving you so many instructions and then in revising your ca intermediate basic cost concepts I hope these were useful to you, right? I have not wasted your time. But today I won't start with chapter 6. I think I should better stop here today. So from tomorrow onwards, we will be on chapter 6 that is decision making chapter using marginal costing technique. So I will revise the marginal costing quickly that is intermediate marginal costing tomorrow and then we will start solving the questions. Okay friends? So for today, I think this much is enough. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.